Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about acne. We are going to discuss the presentation, the different types and causes of acne. We are going to discuss that how do you treat acne in detail. First of all, acne vulgaris is a cutaneous disorder that has profound psychological impact leading to low self-esteem and depression in patients. Acne occurs at the age of 11 to 12 years and genetic predisposition plays a very important role in the development of acne. Other than that, hormonal factors including that there is increased androgen production during puberty. That increased androgen production during puberty causes increase in sebum production from the hair follicles from the glands of the skin and that excessive sebum produced by these glands gets infected, infected with QT bacterium acnes, a bacteria that was previously named as propionibacterium acnes and it gets infected with QT bacterium acnes and results in formation of acne. This is a picture showing gland of skin where there is sebaceous gland that produces sebum. That sebaceous gland produces more sebum whenever there is more androgen in the body during puberty. Excess sebum accumulates over here and it gets out through the pores of skin. But sometimes dead skin cells clog these pores. Sometimes hair follicle growth can also occur during puberty and that hair follicle can also block this spore. So there is excess androgen production and the hair growth can also block this spore. Whenever the hair growth blocks this spore or the dead skin, the debris block the pore, the sebum accumulates. And when the sebum accumulates, it rots inside. When it rots inside, it produces free radicals. This excessive sebum causes irritation of the skin. The accumulation of sebum causes irritation of skin, inflammation of skin, and that inflammation appears initially as a white head. This is a picture showing white heads. Look at the white heads. Later, this sebum comes in contact with the air and it oxidizes and it converts its color from white to black and then it becomes a black head. This is a picture showing oxidized sebum and these appear as black heads. Then within these glands where the sebum has been blocked, there is a bacteria called as QT bacterium acne. That QT bacterium acne proliferates in this area because whenever there is a block, behind that block there is infection and QT bacterium acne oxidizes this sebum and results in the formation of pus. There is formation of pus by this bacteria. The formation of pus results in aggravation of the acne. Sometimes this pus exceeds to an extent that that forms cysts and abscesses in the skin, huge collections of pus in the skin, which is the most severe form of acne. And when these cysts rupture, they, have, they cause permanent damage to the skin, resulting in scarring of skin. In women, acne worsens week before the menstruation begins. Foods with higher glycemic load, with high glucose in it, high sugar in it can worsen the acne. Acne is more common in areas where there are more sebaceous gland that can produce more sebum. And it is more common in face, shoulder, chest and back where there are more sebaceous glands. And initially, it starts as a non-inflammatory or comedonal acne, the white heads, the black heads. Then propionibacterium proliferates in it and there is inflammatory reaction which results in the papules and pustules. And when these papules and pustules exceed greater than 5 millimeter and there are huge abscesses, they are, that is called as a nodular acne. Coming to non-inflammatory comedonal acne, closed comedones, white heads. White heads are called as closed comedones and these are closed round lesions that contain sebum and keratin. The black heads, black heads are the open comedones. When this comedone is opened and the sebum comes in contact with the air, the sebaceous gland gets oxidizes, the sebum gets oxidized and it appears as a black head, a black spot on the skin. Inflammatory acne occurs whenever there is severe infection with QT bacterium acne that results in the formation of pus, papules and pustules arise from these comedones. This is a picture showing pus. The pus is visible in this form of acne. Then when these 
pus filled cavities increase in size and they are greater than 5 mm in diameter that is called as a nodular acne and it is the most severe form of acne that can result in scarring this is a picture showing nodular acne look at the lesions the lesions are greater than 5 mm there are huge lesions and these lesions have ruptured resulting in scar formation now coming to the treatment of acne we'll divide the treatment into mild moderate and severe form of acne the mild comedonal acne can be treated with topical retinoids once daily at bed time retinoids cause sun sensitivity therefore they are applied at night they are not applied in the morning they are applied at the night because they cause sun sensitivity topical tretinoin adapalene terazotine these are the topical retinoids that come in the form of creams gels lotions the side effects include sun sensitivity therefore they are applied at night and dryness and flaking of skin other than topical retinoid topical benzyl peroxide 2.5% which has a comedolytic effect as well as antibacterial effect can also be used twice daily so you can either use topical retinoid or benzyl peroxide topical benzyl peroxide is used twice daily and it comes in the form of creams lotions facial cleansers foam and remember the topical benzyl peroxide is comedolytic as well as antibacterial and it causes bleaching of the fabric and the hair remember these topical retinoids and topical benzyl peroxide must be applied throughout the face a thin layer should be applied throughout the face rather than applying them only on the lesions combination therapies can also be used in combination therapies usually the two three drugs are combined together in one formulation benzyl peroxide combined with antibiotic like clindamycin or with any retinoid that combination can be used if the acne is severe but usually mild comedonal acne should be started with either topical retinoid or simple topical benzyl peroxide twice daily topical antimicrobials that can be used for acne include clindamycin twice daily or once daily in the form of foam erythromycin can also be used twice daily 2% gel dapsone minocycline is no longer used clindamycin and erythromycin are the main drugs that are used in the treatment of acne coming to the treatment of moderate papular acne moderate papular acne is the one that has pus in it and it it needs to be treated with combination therapy combination of topical benzyl peroxide applied twice daily with topical retinoid or instead of topical retinoid you can use a topical antibiotic like clindamycin or erythromycin with that if the acne is severe you can add oral antibiotic like tetracycline clindamycin doxycycline these are the drugs that can also be given with antibiotic oral antibiotic therapy with these topical applications combined oral contraceptives can also be used in female remember combined oral contraceptive use can decrease acne in female how can combined oral contraceptive decrease acne combined oral contraceptive include estrogen and progesterone remember as i said that uh, acne is caused by androgens androgen is a male hormone that results in acne formation and the small amount of androgens are present in females as well so when you give female hormone estrogen progesterone the female hormone estrogen progesterone dominate over the androgens and they reduce the amount of androgens resulting in resolution of acne so combination therapy can be used where topical combination of benzyl peroxide with a retinoid can be used or as an antibiotic and you can also add oral antibiotic with this now here i have a sample prescription a sample regimen that can be prescribed to a patient with papular or pustular acne what you do is that you ask the patient to wash the face in morning with benzyl peroxide cleanser usually there are facial cleansers that contain benzyl peroxide and patient can wash face with it other than that if uh, if a uh, benzyl peroxide gel is available you ask the patient to wash the face with gentle face cleaner and apply a thin layer of benzyl peroxide at night you ask the patient to wash the face with gentle facial cleaner and apply topical retinoid at night retinoid needs to be applied at night benzyl peroxide needs to be applied in the morning why topical retinoid needs to be applied in the night because it causes sun sensitivity if the patient show improvement there is stable improvement for at least 3 to 6 week you can 
go for a step down therapy where you shift to retinoid monotherapy as a maintenance monotherapy retinoid monotherapy for maintenance is a very good drug now coming to the treatment of severe acne severe acne is the one that is a nodular acne in which the size is greater than 5 mm the one that has contains a lot of pus and results in scarring it that is also called as conglobata acne in that case you need to use a combination of oral isotretinoin with topical combination therapy you give a topical combination therapy a, a topical therapy that patient applies on the skin and a drug oral drug oral isotretinoin or oral antibiotic tetracycline doxycycline can also be used so a combination of oral isotretinoin with a topical application can be used or you can use topical combination therapy for skin with an oral antibiotic oral isotretinoin isotretinoin is basically a vitamin a derivatives these retinoids are also vitamin a derivatives so the patient is having severe acne in severe acne oral isotretinoin is used 0.5 mg per kg per day increasing to 1 mg per kg per day in 1 to 2 equally divided doses over one, over 20 weeks or if you are combining oral antibiotic with topical combination therapy you can use tetracycline 500 mg twice daily or doxycycline 100 mg od so a combination is used combined oral contraceptives can be prescribed to female as i said that they reduce androgens and causes resolution of acne oral spironolactone have also shown to reduce acne only in females Now remember retinoids and oral isotretinoin they cannot be given in pregnancy because they cause congenital malformations and they cannot be given with in liver disease and if the patient is taking oral isotretinoin you should not combine it with oral tetracycline treatment now if a female patient comes to you and patient has severe acne and in severe acne you want to use retinoids oral isotretinoin in that patient you must do pregnancy test remember you have must do pregnancy test because pregnancy is a contraindications for these retinoids and if the pregnancy test is positive you can never use these drugs because they will cause abortion they will cause congenital malformation in the baby so pregnancy test must be negative and two methods of contraceptives must be used if the patient is started on topical or oral isotretinoin one being the combined oral contraceptive pills because they will reduce the androgens and will reduce the acne the other one being the barrier method in summary we talked about what is acne the age of onset the risk factors foods with higher glycemic load clinical features close comedons white heads black heads inflammatory acne nodular pustular the treatment of mild comedonal acne either one can be used the combination therapy can be used topical antimicrobials that can be used for acne moderate or papular pustular acne a combination therapy is used oral antibiotic can also be combined a simple prescription severe acne in which you combine topical combination therapy with either oral isotretinoin or you combine the topical antibiotic therapy with oral antibiotics and in females of child bearing age pregnancy test and two methods of contraception must be used If you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine and infectious medicine the link of those videos is given in the description below thank you very much